Hi everyone. Today we're going to talk about saving. So this may be aimed a little more towards um, the younger group, like high school, middle school, college. Um, just some basic things to think about to start saving for your goals. So why should you start saving now? Let me ask you some questions. Do you want to travel? Whether that's for a spring break trip with your friends next year, or you want to travel around the world someday, or you want to travel um, with your family um, for summer vacation and you want some extra spending money, anything like that. Do you want to go to college? Move out of your parents' house. Buy a new phone or other electronic device. Retire someday. That may seem like it's a long ways away, but it's important to start thinking about these things now and start preparing for it. Buy a car, whether it's your first car or you might want a new car down the road. Do you want to be a business owner? Have an emergency fund. The emergency fund is very important, and we're going to talk about that in a little bit. So out of all of these things, I'm sure there's one thing, at least one thing on this list that is on your list of goals that you want to save for. And I'm sure we can think of many more things that you want to save for. But these are the things we need to think about and start preparing for. So I have some statistics to show you. Um, they were surprising to me, and I just wanted to share them, kind of put some things in perspective. So between 1989 and 2016, the cost to attend a university increased nearly eight times faster than wages. The average student loan debt is about $29,000 and $1.5 trillion total in the US. 17% of baby boomers ages 55 to 73 have less than $5,000 in retirement savings. 46% of retirees left the workforce earlier than planned. And the average US household owes $6,849 in credit card debt. Two thirds of Americans wouldn't be able to come up with $1,000 in an emergency. So I just thought these were surprising. It kind of touched on a lot of different areas. Um, so two thirds of Americans not being able to come up with $1,000 in an emergency is why it's so important to start your emergency fund. Because if they can't come up with that money, they're probably left swiping their credit card. And we don't want you to become the statistic of the average US household owing almost $7,000 in credit card debt. 46% uh, of, reti of retirees left the workforce earlier than planned. I've had students tell me that they never want to retire, so it's not something that they feel like they should be saving for. It's not one of their goals. Um, however, a chunk of people are forced to retire early. Um, a good example of this would be medical reasons. You're just not able to work anymore. And these are the things we need to prepare for. I think it's great if you want to keep working um, past retirement age, but we need to prepare for the unexpected things in life. All right, so let's talk about uh, an emergency fund. So for young people, if you just have a part-time job or you don't have a lot of income, start with 500 to $1,000 in your emergency fund. This gives you just a little bit of cushion. So if your car breaks down or something happens, you have a little bit of money saved up so you don't find yourself um, using a credit card or digging yourself in debt. When you do get a career and you start getting a steady income, work your way up to three to six months of expenses. So this would be if you lost your job or some other emergency happened where you need that money saved up in order to survive, you have three to six months of expenses saved to pay your bills until you get it figured out, until you get back on your feet. So these expenses would include housing, transportation, healthcare, food, utilities, and loan or debt payments. Start saving for that. Keep this in mind. Emergency funds are very important. So some really simple steps to start saving. I'm going to go over four steps to start saving. 
there's no excuse to start saving now. Save whatever you can. Open up a savings account. So instead of saving your money in your piggy bank, in your room somewhere, open up a savings account. It'll keep your money safe and it'll help you stay organized. You can start the process online. And if you're under 18, a parent or guardian must be on the account also. And then there's a $5 minimum that has to be in your account and at least $100 to earn interest. It's not a lot of interest, but just something I like to throw out there for you to keep in mind. Use it. Pay yourself first. So this means that you want to save your money first and then pay your bills. So when you get paid, put your money in savings first and then use the rest, whatever's left over after that, to pay your bills and other expenses. This requires you to come up with a budget. Sit down and figure out how much money you're able to save where you can still pay your bills afterwards. And you can be flexible. If it doesn't work one month because you saved too much money, you didn't have enough money pay, to pay your bills, then the next month you can adjust that. Opening sub accounts is a great way to stay organized with your savings. So sub accounts are basically just savings accounts for specific purposes. So you can open up a sub account for a vacation you want to take that you want to save for, or a car, or a college fund. So this just helps you keep your money organized. And then direct deposit and automatic transfers can really help you save without even thinking about it. So when you have a job and you get set up for a direct deposit, that means your paycheck's going right into your account. And then you can set up automatic transfers so that money is automatically dispersed to all of your savings accounts however you want it to disperse. So you can be saving money for your car without even thinking about it because that money is just automatically going into that account. And before you know it, you have money saved up for a down payment on a new car. So again, really easy way to stay organized with your savings. Start earning. If you have a part-time job, set up direct deposit and those automatic transfers. Save any gift money or allowance. This is a really easy way to save some extra cash. It's, it's tempting to spend gift money on things that, you, fun things that you want, which is fine but also save some of it because you didn't have that extra cash before and it's a good way to more quickly get to your goals. And then work odd jobs, sell things on Etsy or sell things that you don't use or wear anymore. Go into your closet, clean it out. Sell things online that you haven't used in a long time. It's a great way to make some extra cash. And then last, set a goal. Make a specific goal and give yourself a deadline. So for example, you want to buy a used car for $3,000 in two years. You've given yourself a specific goal. You've given yourself a deadline. And this makes it so much easier to save because you have something to save for. You have a motivation. You see the light at the end of the tunnel. You see your savings growing towards a specific goal. All right. That's all I have for you today. I know I went through some of that pretty quick, but I just wanted to go through some simple savings strategies and ways you can start saving and why you should start. Um, because we want you to be successful and reach your goals and start thinking about these things. I hope you have a great day and keep an eye out for our next power session. Thank you.